raw. Um, so, uh, as I tried to explain this morning, is this mic registering? The Iwasawa main conjecture for, um, say, an elliptic curve over the cyclotomic ZP extension um, has some interesting arithmetic applications. Um, if you think back to what we did, it, um, it actually proves that the L function of the elliptic curve vanishes at one, say, um, if and only if the, the Selmer group, the P infinity Selmer group, is infinite. So the P infinite Selmer group of E over Q has um, co rank at least one. Um, in particular, if, if the L function, the L function is um, finite, if and only if the, the P infinity Selmer group is finite, or the L function doesn't vanish. Um, and when the L function doesn't vanish, you get um, the, the P part of the BST formula. The conjecture BST formula. Uh, modulo the kinds of hypotheses we had to impose in, in, in the theorem. Um, so, but you might ask for more refined information. Um, what happens when um, um, the derivative, say, of the L function is, is not zero? Um, or, I mean, can we say something about the co-rank of the Selmer group? Um, or can we say something about the P part of the BSD formula? And, and, and what about if the Selmer, this is very, be very much connected to it. Suppose that the co-rank of, of this is, is exactly one, which, which ought to mean that there's a point. Can, can we say anything here? And so what I want to try to explain in this talk is how Iwasawa theory can help us approach these, prob these questions too, but we have to go beyond the Iwasawa theory that we've um, been, I've been discussing in, in the past four lectures, that beyond the usual Iwasawa theory over, over um, um, cyclotomic fields. So, how do we do that? Um, I want to remind you of the Grossagier formula for a moment. Or some more, more or less, what the Grossagier formula looks like. So, um, in the Grossagier formula, there's an uh, auxiliary imaginary quadratic field that enters the picture. So we have we have our elliptic curve, and we have we have a conductor in E. And I'm going to uh, assume that just because I'm going to be interested in this case, that the order of vanishing at s equals one of of L e, of the elliptic or of the L function of the elliptic curve is exactly one. That's one of um, it's not necessary for the gross Zagier formula, but I'm going to, that's the case I'm going to focus on. So then we would choose an imaginary quadratic field. And in the classical gross Zagier setup, uh, maybe we would choose it and so that if every prime that divides in E implies that it, it is split in, in K, um, this means that the, the root the, the sign of the functional equation of k is of e over k is is minus one. Um, yeah. um, and we can actually we could choose it such that happens, and we can even choose it so that the the k twist of the elliptic curve uh, its L function doesn't vanish at one. That's a little bit of analytic number theory. Um, so then. Then we can, choosing such an imaginary quadratic field, we still have that the order of vanishing at s equals one of the L function of the elliptic curve now over k is still is still one. Remember, this will factor as L e of s times L of its quadratic twist. S. Okay. Um, and the gross zagier formula then um, is a is a formula for the first derivative of 
of the L function over K and evaluated at one. So modding out by, I'll write, write it this, this way, we would mod out by, by the, the canonical period for E over K. Uh, well, eventually we'll have to worry about expressing that as the periods for E and the periods of K. Um, and maybe there's some Gauss sum or the square root of the discriminant of K that I'm supposed to put in here somewhere. I'll put a square root of the absolute value of the discriminant of K or something. Anyway, they're, they're actually, actually they all could be absorbed in some constants I don't really care about. Um, but what, what I'm interested in is up to some very simple constants that this is um, equal to the canonical neuron tate height of a particular point on the elliptic curve. So y sub k on e of k is the Higner point. Higner point. And when you compare this, this formula, so we're going to ignore some of these auxiliary constants, when you compare this, this formula with the, with the Bert Swinnerton Dyer conjecture formula, um, you get some expectations for, for this Higner point. So, so that's the gross Zagier formula. That holds without my hypothesis on the order of vanishing. It just, so it actually allows you to determine whether the Higner point has infinite order or not, since the point has infinite order if and only if the canonical height is non-zero. But, so we're in this situation, we know, we're telling ourselves that the derivative doesn't vanish. So the Higner point, um, it's, it's, um, it, its height, or its uh, height pairing with itself is non-zero, and therefore it has infinite order. Um, Gross and Coley Wagen's machine sort of takes over and tells us that in fact that the Mordell Vey group of over K has rank one. And so it's um, modulo torsion. Um, y K then generates a, a sub, well, is a multiple of a generator of that actually. It's, it's, so it's going to sit inside. E of K with finite index. It's going to generate a subgroup of finite index. Then, um, and what we might try to understand now is, is how this relates to the Bert Swinnerton Dyer formula. So let's look at the Bert Swinnerton Dyer formula. That's sort of suggesting that E of K over one of omega E of K, and then there's the regulator for the. Actually, the square root of the discriminant does come into that formula, so square root of absolute value of the discriminant. There's the regulator um, for the Mordell Bay group over K, and that's supposed to equal the order of the Tate Shaft Ravitch group of U over K divided the usual thing, the order of the torsion points over K squared times the product of Tamagawa factors, but now Tamagawa factors over, over K. Um, so let's compare the two, two sides. The only thing that, um, so since, since the rank is exactly one, if, if Z, um, say Z of K, and, and E of K is a, is a generator, and so I'm ignoring the possibility of torsion, so it's a generator of the free part, then the regulator of, of E of K would actually be the height pairing of, of Z of K, the neuron tight, tight height, Z of K, and, but Z, there's going to be some, but y of k is just going to be some multiple of, of z of k because we're in this rank one situation. And so um, this is going to be, I'll write it this way, one over m squared, the height pairing is bilinear of, of the height pairing of yk with itself. So when you compare these, these two sides, then you expect, so, so what do we expect? We expect that, that this m, or the square of m, so I'm in, in this formula I had one over m squared, so I, it's m squared. So the m squared, maybe I should say over here I have m squared times the height of z. So I have m squared times the height of z divided by the height of z. So this is supposed to essentially be a square. So I should have m squared being the order of the tate shaft ravage group v over k times the order. And then, and here's the product over C of L. Well, 
this stage half average group is expected to be a square. This square of the size of the torsion is obviously a square. And the order of the, um, and, and, so what about these Tamagawa factors? Actually, each one of these, since every prime above P of bad, redu of bad reduction, for, or every prime of bad reduction for the elliptic curve splits in K by the Higner hypothesis, actually you just get each Tamagawa factor from Q twice. And so this is also a square. Um, and so this is consistent and, and sort of, um, as I said, I was ignoring issues of torsion and so you have to define, the, when you have torsion, you have to define the index correctly and that would account for this denominator here. So this is very consistent with the Burt, Swinich, and Dyer formula and this even tells us what we should expect. Um, so we're gonna ignore this in, in the case of torsion. Um, so, so we take, so the, the Burt, Swinich, and Dyer formula in this case of analytic rank one, now comes a question of what's the index of the Higner point in the global points. And so, okay, what is that? Seems it might be a bit mysterious. Um, what do you do? You would calculate the height of a generator and the height of the Higner point, take the ratio, and that would give you the index. Um, so about 10 years ago, um, Bertolini de Prasanna proved a formula that generalized a formula of um, Carl Rubin from the uh, CM case. They generalized it to general elliptic curves, which um, expresses something like M, or at least the P part of M, in terms of an object that's of a Niwasaw theoretic nature. So let me try to explain. So I'm now going to assume that P splits in K. That's just another condition to impose on the imaginary quadratic field. It's not going to be too bad. So this is um, for a prime, yeah. But I'm also gonna assume that prime doesn't divide the conductor. Um, then, well, as I sort of said before, the maximal sort of ZP extension of of K actually has ZP rank two. And inside there you have the cyclotomic ZP extension and then you have a complementary extension, the, the anti-cyclotomic ZP extension. So, so the, I'm gonna just be interested now in the anti-cyclotomic ZP extension. This is the anti-cyclotomic ZP extension. Okay, the, Z, the cyclotomic ZP extension of K would be, we, be a billion over Q because it's just adjoining the, the cyclotomic ZP extension of Q. This is actually a, a dihedral extension over, over Q. The, the action of the, the non-trivial automorphism of K over Q on, on the Scala group is, is by inverses. It takes a, an element to its inverse, hence the anti part. Um, and it's a complement to the cyclotomic extension. All right, and, and so there's also been um, quite a bit studied about anti-cyclotomic ZP extensions. What am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to move things around. Um, so I can look at the L function of E twisted by an anti-cyclotomic extension and evaluate it at one, or anti-cyclotomic character. So chi is supposed to be a character now of, of GK. Um, factoring through, through the, the gamma, the anti-cyclotomic gamma, so that's gamma AC, and um, maybe into, into something like, well, QP bar to be a, and, but now there's, there's sort of a dichotomy that comes to play. I could look at finite order characters, and we would find ourselves very much in the same world that we've been in all along. Um, but I can also look at characters that don't have finite order, um, but, but that are still sort of geometric. They're, they're Hodge Tate, um, finite ramification, stuff like that. Um, so I can look at characters now have, that have infinite order. Um, in fact, what I want them to have is, well, they're going to be anti cyclotomic, so they're. I'm, but I'm going to look at characters for the moment that are that are Hodge Tate, so they're, um, and, um, and 
they have two hot state weights, one at the prime V and one at the prime V bar, and which, so P is, is equal to V, V bar, and, and K, because we're assuming that P splits in K. This is where this is now, now entering the picture. And um, maybe you would have hot state weight N at one and, and minus N at the other. And if N is larger than, than one, say, then the weights, the hot state weights of chi are dominating the hot state weights of the elliptic curve, which are zero and one. So you either have all you know, positive hot state weights now at, at a prime V, if you look at sort of the, the T tensor with, well, the T, what I would call the T twisted by, by chi. Um, it'll have hot state weights, say, one plus N and, and, and N at V, and, and one minus N and minus N at V bar. And these will all be greater than zero, and these will all be less than or equal to zero. And, um, and, and then it turns out that um, Le of, of chi of one is a, is a central critical value, but that the, to make it algebraic, the period that you um, have to normalize by is a CM period for K, and the power of that CM period is gonna vary um, with, with K, or with N. So you, one can think of this as a Rankine-Selberg L function, the L function of E twisted by, or of the modular form for E and its Rankine product with the, the CM, or the, the, or the modular form associated to this Grossen character, and that modular form would have weight um, 2n plus 1, um, which is going to be larger than 2. So it has the dominating periods. Um, and so this is very different from what we were seeing for the piatic L function over, say, the cyclotomic extensions where the, the period was remaining constant and just the chi was varying. So it turns out, though, that there exists um, there exists a piatic L function, and I'll call it L of BDP for Bertolini Domon Prasanna for E over K, say, and that belongs to, well, ideally it would belong to, to ZP, the, the, the Iwasawa algebra for the anticyclotomic extension. But actually, the way I'm writing the periods, to do it more canonically, you have to go to the maximal unramified extension of ZP, so, um, and complete. So this is the, the VIT vectors for, for FP bar. Um, it's not gonna, doesn't affect the USAW theory at all. Um, and this has the, the property that for one of these characters, chi, um, the, the image of this L function under the homomorphism to, to QP bar determined by, by chi actually um, you know, in, interpolates Le of, of chi of one over omega of k to the four n. There's a, p, a piatic period that comes out also to the, to the four n, and then there's some interpolating stuff. But, and the point is this is for, for chi um, as on preceding slide or piece of paper or whatever preceding thing. Um, okay, so what does that have anything to do? No, it's these chi's all have infinite order, and I'm, I'm interested in the, in the birch swinerton dire point. So it may, but it makes perfect sense to, to sort of take this function and, and look at its image on, at the trivial character. It's just not interpolating anything that's like a classical critical value. So what is it? So the formula of Bert swinerton dyer is that this is one minus, not Bert swinerton dyer sorry, Bertolini, Dermon, and Persona, one minus AP over E plus P times P times the p -adic log, so the, the, on the elliptic curve, so E, say, KV, of the Higner point. And then that's actually squared. Why is this so nice? Well, so certainly E of K will be a subgroup 
of, of E of kV. And this is a, a very perfectly good Lie group. Um, and since kV is split, this is actually identified with, with qP. This is uh, a compact Lie group of, of Z, with zP rank 1. The log, we have the, the, sort of the, the, the log map of, of this, this group. You can think of it as the formal group logarithm. Um, essentially, you know, the, kills the torsion, so it'll land inside, land inside kV. And um, what's happening is, is that the log of, of yk is telling me what the index of the group points generated by, uh, by the Higner point. It's essentially giving me the index inside E of, of kV, at least modulo torsion, because torsion is killed, of, of the group that's generated by, by the Higner point. And this is finite. And so, and, but inside here, I have, um, so we can call this, maybe we'll call this um, MP. And we want to compare MP to M, which we had before, right? So, so we have Z of YK sitting inside here. And I'm only, so I'm only interested in the P part of, of, of these things. So um, what, I, what it's clear, of course, is that MP is a multiple of the P part of, of M. So this is this at index M. Um, so, so MP is going to be the P part of, of M times the, the index, um, well, times an, an EKV of ZP of, of the, by the closure, the closed subgroup generated by, by EK, but this is up to torsion a ZP module of rank one, and this is a Z module of, of rank one. So the torsion, I mean, so the thing it generates is just, you know, the ZP module generated by it, um, span of it. Right, so, and so, so we're interested in this if we're wanting to get the p part of the Bird-Swinnerton and Dyer formula, and now we have an Iwasawa object that's that's telling me what this is, and this seems fairly innocuous. So what can we do with that? Well, whenever you have a p-adic L function, you also have uh, a Selmer group generally and an Iwasawa main conjecture. So what I need to tell you now is what the Selmer group is related to this particular p-adic L function. So, an anticyclotomic cyclotomic uh, main conjecture. That's what we want to talk about now. So, um, the module M is going to change a little bit, but it's going to look exactly like we had before. I'm going to take M to be T, um, tensor over, over ZP, with lambda AC dual. Um, lambda a c is not going to be quite what I'd written for. I'm going to stick to zp coefficients for the moment. Um, that's, so that's the Iwasawa algebra of this anticyclotomic extension um, with rho of e, but now we'll have sort of the inverse of our anticyclotomic canonical character. So this should start to look just like what we were doing before. You're just sort of changing labels. Um, so Lambda of, of AC, if I remind you, is Gawa group of K projecting on, onto gamma of, of AC, and then thinking of that as uh, the units inside of, of lambda AC. So group of units. Um, and then we're going to have the SBD Selmer group, which is going to be contained inside H1K of this discrete group, or module M. And what are the classes going to be? Well, the restriction at L of the class, well, or I should say W of the class will be zero for all W not dividing P. That's exactly what we did before. So the only place we're going to change things is we're going to change things, we're going to change the conditions, the local conditions at the primes above P. And so we have two primes above P, right? P was V, V, V bar. And, um, 
I'm going to say that the condition at, at V of C is anything. I don't, so I'm really not imposing any conditions. That's the relaxed condition. But the restriction at V bar of C is going to be zero. So it's the strict condition. So it's even an easier to write down than, than what we did for the classical summer groups. Um, where does this come from? This comes from looking at the block Cotto conditions for the block Cotto summer group of E twisted by these characters of, of large order for the Gawa representations coming from T twisted by these characters of infinite order. This um, summer group would capture chapter those. Um, so not so, and, and so just as before. Um, the summer group is closely related to the summer groups for, for the twists. Um, all right, so then that suggests um, the main conjecture. We would look at XBDP to be just the, the, the Pontryagin dual of, of our summer group. And so what should our main conjecture be? Um, the main conjecture in this case would be that X BDP is a torsion lambda AC module. And then that the characteristic ideal of X BDP is generated by uh, a suitable piatic L function. Now, my piatic L function is not quite defined in LAC, so I have to to, to extend to extend my my scalars. Well, let's put this x b to p is generated by um, L b d p in lambda uh, a c. U R, which would be the, the where I have to extend scalars to the, the maximal and ramified extension. And there, um, I can find it. I can find a piatic L function that's actually defined in lambda of A C, but the periods are harder to write down. So it's just a matter of of, of changing periods. Um, so that would be that would be the main conjecture. Um, why would that be of, of any interest to us? Um, once again, if it's torsion lambda, a, lambda AC module, we can actually prove that there's no finite order um, submodules in this case. So there, it's a pseudo null, and, and, and there's also a control theorem. So there's a control theorem. But now it's a control theorem at a point that's not connected to a point of specialization for or classical specialization for, for the piatic L function, but I want to look at um, the, the Selmer, BDP Selmer group uh, evaluated at, or I want to look at the, where, where, where gamma, so gamma um, is a topological generator. Again, gamma minus one. And I want to, this is going to be related to what I'll, maybe I was calling before something like the relaxed at P or V and strict at V bar Selmer group for E. So it's the usual Selmer conditions away from the primes of a P. We just relax them at, at V and just make them strict at V bar and, and then into the products over the W's dividing N E of the H1 unramified. This is starting to look really familiar, right? K, KW of, 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 of W. W, of course, is the P divisible group. So we have a, a um, uh, control theorem like this, and that this is, in fact, even surjective if, um, if, if the Selmer group, the relaxed strict Selmer group, is finite. Very few changes to the arguments we made before. There's still a, there's a correction term for, for for the primes above p, which I which I'm not going to go into. Um, what's that? Um, if if this group is finite, then this map is actually surjective, just as before when when we were doing the control theorem for the for the usual um, Iwasawa theoretic Selmer group. And so this is this is going to say. 
before. Uh, this is K W. Yeah. So this is this is the product over the places of K that divide a bad reduction, and this is going to again be these are the local Tamagawa factors. But there's two. So for each prime rational prime that divides an E, there's two primes above it. So you're actually getting the same term, same, the term with the same order, uh, t you know, twice each time. So but anyway, so so we're, we're finding that. So. Um, so in fact, as before, we, we find that the, the order of x bdp modulo gamma minus 1 of x bdp is just um, the order of this relaxed strict Selmer group for E times Tamagawa factors, or p parts of Tamagawa factors times uh, a term, a term at the, the prime at V and V bar, some finite order term. I think it's actually just the, the, the number of local points um, on the P divisible group. So that was the main conjecture. And that's the sort of what we have. And then so a consequence of the main conjecture, so, so a consequence of the main conjecture would be so we can replace it by it by um, by a generator of of this um, of, of the characteristic ideal, right? So we would have this order of, of x mod, mod gamma minus one would be the order of of, of lambda a c modulo a generator um, of so where, where g generates the characteristic ideal. Of, of X BDP, and um, and then comparing that with what we were, what, what the main conjecture is actually saying, you can you can then relate that say that that would be equal to the order of ZP modulo one minus AP plus P over P times the log of the Hegner point squared. And on the other hand, that's this, um, the order of this, this relaxed strict Selmer group at E times Tamagawa factors, product or, or this, maybe the CWs for the Ws dividing in E, times these, these correction terms at V and, and, and V bar. And these are precisely going to compensate for this one minus, minus AP plus P when, it, when it's divisible by P. So you're left with, with something like, like that, um, and so now, what we, we so here remember this was basically our the, the the p part of the m that we wanted, at least the p part of m times the the index of of the global points in in the local points. And so we, so now that we would like to see something similar on, on for this relaxed strict summer group, but maybe where we can relate it to the tate shafarevich group. So I'm going to write down one of these four-term exact sequences that we've, I've been writing before. Okay, so what's, what's that going to look like? Um, So I'd have, yeah, we'll do it this way. So I'd have, maybe the, so let's, let's do the simple case where, where, do I really need the simple case? Well, for simplicity, let, let's look at, look at ordinary. Wherever I'm writing ord, you can just put the block cut OF. Um, it's really not necessary, but okay. So we'll look at the ordinary relaxed Selmer group for T, and we'll map this into the H1 KV bar. That's where 
this this condition is relaxed for T modulo um, uh, the, the image of the H1 kV bar of, of T plus. Um, that, as before, maps to um, the X, well, ORD, ORD, but that's, the, that's sort of the, the usual, that's the dual of the usual piatic Selmer group, in, the, in this case, for E over K, dual. And then the kernel is X uh, ordinary strict. Let's see. All right. So since we've put ourselves in a position where the Higner point has infinite order, the theorem of, of Gross, or, and well, really of Kohli Wagen tells me that, that the dual of this, the summer group is, has, is ZP plus something finite plus something finite, actually, plus the, then this says the order is the tate Shafarevich group. Order is, is the tate Shafarevich group of, uh, Igor K, or at least it's P primary part. Um, so you can, um, and this part is, is, is coming from a local point, or, or coming from a global point in particular, it's going to have non-trivial images in the local points. And so this map is the dual of something that's not zero. <laughs> so that this map is actually not zero. And this, aside from some anomalous cases, is actually just free ZP. But anyway, the image of the ZP inside here has, has, um, is non-zero, so has non-zero index. Um, and at least under a residually irreducible condition, that's going to tell me that this actually, so this is, so if, if, if EP is um, irreducible, as a GK representation, really, I don't need just I don't need any p rational points over, or tor p torsion points over k. Then this map is actually zero. This map is, map is zero. So what we can conclude from from that is that the ordinary relaxed Selmer group for T is the same as as the ordinary. Or or Selmer group, group for T. Fine. I'm now I'm going to write down one more of these long exact sequences, or well, not too long. They just have one more term than we usually look at. Um, so we look at the ORD relaxed again for T, but that's really looking at this. Um, now I'm going to restrict to the other prime, the prime above P. So that's landing inside the 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 image early of, of H1 KV of, of T plus. Um, that maps to the X, uh, the, the dual of the relaxed strict Selmer group. Um, so that was the Selmer relaxed strict for E in its dual. And then the co kernel is this X ord, ord strict. And um, let's see if I can actually explain what's going on here. So, Ord comma relaxed, R-E-L. Isn't it obvious? <laughs> well, so the previous thing told us that, that these were the same. So I'm starting this. And now I'm, I looked at two of these sequences. These. Oh, this. This is ord, ord. <laughs> I didn't, sorry, I didn't realize which, which line you were looking at. Yeah. Um, is that, I mean, calling something illegible probably doesn't identify which thing it is on here, but. <laughs> um, but since this is cell ord, ord, um, which is of, of T, this is, this is ZP. In fact, this is just the, the global points, the, the that the, the subgroup generated by the, the global points, the image inside will, will have non-trivial restriction to here because we have global points. Um, and the co-kernel, so this is, this is the sort of the local points. And so the co-kernel of this map 
the, the co-kernel um, is this index, this local index here we'll call m sub lc loc. So the co-kernel of this has order, has order um, m lo m loc, and um, and actually there's something similar here. This zp to this zp is sort of a dual of that. So the map from this zp into this zp also has co-kernel of order m loc. So the order of this is, is the local index times the order of this m squared, which is the order of the tate shafarevich group, or the p part of the tate shafarevich group of, of, of e over k. Uh, maybe I'm supposed to be doing this here. Um, infinity. So we have that. So, so what I'm say this has order, so the order equals um, m log times, times the order of the tate shafarevich group of E over k, um, at least the p primary part. And so what does that mean? So that means that the order of this is the, we have the co-kernel as order of uh, this, this m log squared. So we have the m log squared times the order of the tate shapiravich group of, of E over K, P infinity. I'm ignoring a, what might come if there were um, P torsion points defined over the local fields of QP. Then there would be these correction terms that are, that are gonna be compensated by the one minus APs plus, plus Ps. Um, but this is, this is the, the, main, the main idea. So, so now what we have is that So now, putting things back together, we have that the order of this cell relaxed strict Sommer group at E is, is equal to m log squared times the order of the P primary part of the tate shafarevich group for E over K. Um, and then if I multiply this, of course, by the, by the Tamagawa factors, or the Ws that divide n of the, of the Tamagawa factors, n times the Tamagawa factors. This is exactly what was computed to be the order of, of Zp modulo the one minus Ap plus P over P times the log of the Higner point squared. So I'm ignoring again the, these correction terms and event, so this is supposed to be um, M, this is Mp, this is M loc, times the, the m that we want, basically. So we, we, or at least the p part of m. So the p part of the index of the Higner point, the p in, in, or at least the p part squared of the index of the Higner point is, ignoring the bit of coming from one minus ap plus p over p is, in fact, just the order of the tate shafarevich group. Times, times the Tamagawa factors, which, which was exactly what we would expect from the Bertzwin and Dyer formula. Co kernel, the co kernel of that arrow. Yes, that's the definition of MLOC. Um, anyway, so all of that is to sort of tell you that there's not such difficult, you know, sort of diagram chasing that that sort of will allow us to go past from this main conjecture, this different anti-cyclotomic main conjecture, to the expected p part of the index of the Higner point um, inside the global points. And so this seems like pretty good um, motivation for trying to tackle. Such, such main conjectures. And so um, we, we even have progress. Progress toward, toward this um, sort of BDP main, Iwasawa main conjecture. Um, essentially, and essentially what we, we can show um, is that the BDP, P-adic L function 
um, divides the characteristic ideal of, of XBDT. So you get one of these, these divisibilities. This is um, um, essential. This is mo mostly due to due to 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 Shen Wan. Um, I'm I'm lying a little bit. That's why I haven't used the word theorem because we can't actually prove this in the classical Higner point setting. We have to have at least one prime that divides the conductor that's inert in, in the, say, or, or ramified in the imaginary quadratic field K, and so we have to work with Higner points that come from Shimura curve parameterizations, and then the Tamagawa issues are a little funnier because now you've got possibly Tamagawa factors at primes that are inert in K, and they get compensated for by the changes in the degrees of the modular parameterizations, and so there's a lot of, a lot of uh, sort of um, being precise with formulas that goes into it. But this is the, the spirit of what one can do. And actually, this in combination with um, Coley Wagen's um, Euler system arguments um, for these Higner points that arise from Schumer curves is actually enough to, to prove the Bertson and Denier formula in cases of analytic rank one. Um, let me just state an actual theorem. Uh, so here's a, here's a theorem. Um, due to um, joint work with Dimitar Yechev and myself and, and, and Shen Wan, um, again, things move, are moving fast in this area, and this is not the final word. Um, we, we know more. Um, let E over Q be an elliptic curve um, with um, well, analytic rank one. Um, suppose um, E is semi-stable, which is the same as saying that it's that it's, um, this, this conductor is square-free. Then um, L prime of, of E of one divided by the canonical period and the regulator of, of the more double A group. The, the P part of this is um, the expected value, which I'm not going to write, but you know what it is now. Um, if um, EP is an irreducible GQ representation, and um, I'll say P is a prime of, of, of good reduction. And I'm not actually requiring it to be ordinary. We, we can actually prove this also at the super singular primes. Um, the point is that that p L function of, of B, uh, Bertolini, Domon, and Fursana doesn't depend on the elliptic curve or the modular form being ordinary or not. So we have that, that BDP formula primes of super singular reduction as well. Um, in fact, this can also be extended to most cases where, where the prime P also divides the conductor, so it would be a prime of multiplicative reduction. That was done by Francesco Silla. I should say um, P has to always be greater than or equal to 3. You have to worry about, um, and when P is equal to 3, whether AP is 0 or not, and sort of the AP not being 0 depends upon some work of, of Florian Sprung, but this is the kind of thing that we can prove. Um, there, there are similar results in the complex the cases of complex multiplication, um, but I, I won't go into that. But I want to want you to carry away from this lecture is that the classical Iwasawa main conjectures, um, as, as they sort of historically have been formulated, are not the end of the the world, <laughs> or, or they're the end of the story. Um, and in fact, there, there's a lot of arithmetic information to be extracted from looking at other um, main conjectures, even for elliptic curves. And one story I didn't get to, to tell here is that this can also be used to, to show the, the circle of ideas to show that if the Selmer group, the P infinity Selmer group of the elliptic curve has co rank one, then in fact the elliptic curve has analytic rank one. And, more, and, so, and hence algebraic rank one and, and the finite Tchaff Ravich group, sort of a converse to the theorems of Gross Sagier and Kulivagin. But that's. That's another look at those same exact sequences. All right, thank you.
Any questions? Oh, just briefly, how come you had log yk before was just defined as the p part, the p part of m, and then there's this also this m log that shows up here. I'm a little confused. Well, wait, do you understand? Uh, you're right. You're right. So I've I've written the wrong thing here. So this is okay. So this. So what was m? No, m was the index, the index of the Higner point inside the, the group of global points. And the log of yk is essentially measuring the index of the Higner point inside the local point. So that'll be the product of the index inside the global points and then the index of the global points inside the local points. So this was the log of the Higner point inside the global points, I hope. And, and then um, this is the m loc is the, the index of the global points inside the local points. Did I get that right? <laughs> I'm making my notation up on the fly. Sir. Other questions? OK, uh, let's thank Chris again for his lecture series. Uh, and since that's the end of the regular lecture courses, I just wanted to take uh, this opportunity.